say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Turn to somebody need this morning and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break our love into. Amen. I give the Lord the praise that you're looking forward to getting your crown one of these days. Amen. That's what we all are working towards, right? One of these days to get our mansion, to get our robe, and to get our crown. Y'all, we're going to take all these little shoes that we got on and put on a pair of them old Jesus sandals, what they call it. We're going we're gonna to put on a long white robe. We'll be able to tell the story of, Lord, how we came over hills and how we came over mountains and how we had to battle disappointment and how we had to endure all of these things only to get to God and to him to look at you and say, you didn't get it all, but well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Come on up a little higher and I'll make you ruler over a minute. Enter into the joys of life. But let me tell you, everybody talking about him ain't going to him. So let's make sure that we are the ones that not only talk about it, but we are the ones that inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So good to see all of you that are here on this morning. God bless you for being here this morning. For those of you that are visiting with us, we're glad to have you as well. And um, we thank those of you that are watching us via live stream. So glad that you tuned in to be here with us this morning. And prayerfully, you'll be blessed by those things that are said. Any of God still being good to anybody here this morning? I just want to make sure I was in the right place. I didn't read cemetery on the sign when I pulled up in the light. So I believe that I'm at the right place. Amen. God been good to us better. Somebody said that he's been better to us than we can even consider being to our own selves. When you didn't care about yourself, just think God cared so much about you. When you didn't care about your soul, where you would end up or where you were going, you had a God that thought enough of you not to let you continue to go down the path that you were going down. But God, like he had to do Saul before he became Paul, God had to knock you off your high horse and God had to, had to get you by yourself so that he can speak to you and get you to where it is that he wants you to be. Amen. And God is so good. And we thank you for being here this morning. And anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. We'll be in Genesis chapter number 32 and we'll begin reading at verse number 24 and we'll conclude at verse number 30. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee, oh, bless me now, my. Savior, I come to Thee, and we need Thee, oh. verse number 24 and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh 
And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Talking about a handicap match. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto them, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has power with God and with men and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it that thou dost ask me after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life has been preserved. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. If you would, go with me to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear wise and gracious Heavenly Father, it is indeed once more and again, Father, we're just grateful. We're thankful for this moment and this time that you have blessed us with to come and feast at the table of your word. Father, there are many people that have came seeking different things on this morning, Father. And I know that you are just so powerful that you can be everything that we all need at the same time. Amen. Father, I ask at this time that you would hide you behind your cross, that no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. And Father, if you do these things for us, we'll be so ever mindful to glorify you and to give you the praise for doing so. It is in your darling son, Jesus' name we pray and that all those that love God say, amen. 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 I want to preach this morning for the subject. I want you to help me out. Look to somebody close to you this morning and encourage them by saying, you got to wrestle for your blessing. Uh, they, they didn't know they had to fight. They didn't know they were at war. Look at somebody else and say, you got to wrestle for your blessing. In this story, Jacob was afraid. He was greatly afraid. And not only was he greatly afraid, but he was greatly distressed because he had 400 men that were coming to wipe him out. His brother Esau, you remember, he had stolen his birthright from his brother. And now, some years later, his brother has finally found him, has finally located where he's been hanging out. And he's mad, as you would have been mad. He's, he's furious with him, and he's got 400 armed men, and he's going not only to wipe Jacob out, but he's going to wipe his family out. He's going to wipe his children out because he has to destroy the bloodline to get in the position to get his inheritance. Again, he has to wipe his brother out. And the Bible says that he was greatly distressed. He was afraid, afraid for his family. Afraid for his future, afraid for the things that were going on. And in that moment, church, he became desperate. Well. And he begins to focus on Esau. And he begins to cry out to God at the river Jabbok. He begins to cry out to God, God, go do something about Esau. Esau is my problem. Esau is my issue. God, I really need you now. I'm in a desperate situation. I'm afraid of what's going to happen to me if you don't handle Esau. Esau is on his way. Esau is coming to kill me. God, do something about Esau. He's my problem. He thought that he had too much Esau, but God was thinking your real issue is that you got too much Jacob. Church, sometimes... What we think is the real problem is not the real problem. God can handle your Esau's. God can handle whatever has come to stop and hinder you. God was saying, you don't have a problem that I cannot handle. The issue is not too much Esau, but too much Jacob. But when I get through with this, by the time I finish wrestling with you, you shall no longer be Jacob. You're not going to leave here the way that you came. You're not going to leave here struggling with the same issue that you struggled with because I'm going to so touch you. I'm going to so transform you. Then he says something powerful. 
if you look it up, if you look and get a few other commentaries to look up this verse, he says, I'm going to change your name. And you shall no longer be called Jacob, but I'm going to call you Israel, which means prince with God. And then, church, he makes this promise, and it's powerful. He said, for you shall have power with men, with God, and favor with men. Power with God and favor with men. Church, God has got a plan and a purpose for every person who is listening to me right now. God wants to make something useful, something influential, something powerful for every person under the sound of my voice right now. God is wanting you to understand that he can bless you with something called a blessing. Church, it's a supernatural force on your life that gives you power with God. And it gives you favor with men. And it causes the blessing to come over your life. To such a degree that even if people try to curse you, and even if haters just start hating on you, even if people start attacking you, there's a blessing on your life that God says, because they have wrestled and they have desire for what I have for them, I'm going to give them power with God, and I'm also going to give them favor with men. Everybody say, power with God and favor with men. You remember the Bible said in Hosea that he was weeping and wrestling. Weeping and wrestling. Why? Because he was a desperate man. And it's time for us, church, to get a little bit desperate. I want to say to all of us that are in the room, that all of us, that the men in the room, that the women should not be the only ones that shed tears and weep. But there comes a time when we as men, we need to wrestle with God for our families. I don't hear nobody. And, and it's okay, church, to weep sometimes because we try to act strong in front of everybody. But sometimes, if you be honest, you tremble on the inside because you don't have all of the answers. But you can go and you can get by yourself and you can wrestle with God on behalf of your family. You can wrestle with God and you can weep all night you can wrestle and weep until God blesses you you know you're desperate when you're wrestling with an angel that ain't nobody to play with I know we like to think of angels as the cute little people that's just flying around on the little wings but that's not what angels really look like you know you're desperate when you wrestle with an angel Jacob wrestled with the angel until it was a draw it was a tie. This is crazy. They're not even in the same weight division. The Bible said in Psalms 8 and 5 that he has made man a little lower than the angels. Psalms 120 said, bless the Lord, O ye angels, which excel in strength. One angel killed 185,000 men in the Old Testament. And yet this man is so desperate that he wrestles and he weeps with the angel because he said, I can't just let my family be attacked and I can't just let my life just not matter and something's not right and I need to change and I need something in my life that's forever going to be changed. So I'm going to stay here until you bless me. He's wrestling church until it becomes a draw. How is that possible? You've seen the stories, I've seen them, where somebody has been in a terrible accident sometimes. Maybe it's a parent, and in desperation, that man or that woman, uh, maybe it's something, a car or something has fallen over that child. And that person would have never thought they had the strength to do that. But because they are caught up in the moment, you've seen people lift up stuff that they never thought that they can lift up and do stuff because they are acting out of desperation. He was wrestling not for bragging rights. He was wrestling not for this and that. He was not wrestling for fun. He was a desperate man, and he was capable of doing desperate things. And what I'm trying to say to you, church, is when you're really going to get changed from God, and when you're really going to go more than the surface level, 
When it's going to be more than just happy and clappy. And then you go right back to who you were and what you were in. The fear and the desperation, the sin or whatever it is that you are in. If you really want a change to take place in your life, you got to lose that casual state of mind. And you got to get desperate with God. You got to say, Lord, I'm wrestling and I'm weeping. And, the, and, he, and he lost that casual state of mind that he had. Y'all, the angel is closely monitoring the fight. He could have killed the man at any time that he wanted to. He could have took Jacob out at any moment that he thought that he wanted to do. But notice something. God is not interested in destroying you and hurting you. God is interested in changing you. He's focused on one thing. He wanted a change in Jacob. He could have killed him, but instead he just held on to him and let him fight. He wasn't hitting him. He just sitting there let him fight by himself. Let him, let him fight until there was no more Jacob left on the inside of him. His name means liar. His name means deceiver. You know, he stole the birthright. He came out of the womb as a twin, his brother Esau. And when he came out of the womb, the Bible said that he had his brother by the heel. And he was trying to remove him from the blessing, from the birth. Something in him was always lying and deceiving and was just a little bit, as we say, shady. You know, he was partly cloudy, if you get my drift. There was always, he was that kid, you know, that always something just not right about this guy. This was Jacob. And I want to get the Jacob out of Jacob so that he can reach his full potential. Church, the reason that God allows us to struggle, the reason that God allows us to have pressure and weeping and wrestling is not to kill us, is not to crush us, is not to destroy us but to change us. Church, we are not prone to change when we're comfortable. We are not prone to change when we are on top of the world and living it up. We are not prone to change when everything is going our way. And God said, I'm more interested in your character than I am you being comfortable. He's more interested in his will and in his plan than he wants to get you to a point to where he says, hey, you know that old guy that was always playing the game? When I get through with you this night, you'll no longer be Jacob. You're going to emerge from this place as a prince with God. And you're going to have power with God and you're going to have favor with men. And I'm going to open doors that no man is able to stop. I'm going to pour out blessings on your life and I'm going to use you for my cause and for my glory so you can be who I've called you to be. Now, we've got to become more aggressive in our wrestling with God. Church, we've got to hunger and thirst for the righteousness of God. We got to get desperate, church. I'm telling you, the world is desperate. And the world is looking for some people who have had an encounter with the Savior, who have had an encounter with God. The world is looking for some people who have not just been told about something, but have been transformed. That there's no more Jacob on the inside of you, but they have become princes with God. Didn't the Bible tell you that you were a chosen generation? That you were a what? a royal priesthood and a chosen nation. He talking about you, church. Now here's the key to the story. The angel asked him, what is your name? And why is that so significant? Because the last time that he asked that very question was when his father was dying on his deathbed. And he was blind. The old man was blind and he was dying. And Jacob came in and when his father asked him, what is your name? He couldn't see him and he said, what is your name? And he said, my name is Esau. And because he deceived his father, his father blessed him with a double portion and he left. Now, the angel or God is asking him, what is your name? 
and he says, I'm going to deal with who I really am. The last time you asked me that question, I didn't tell you the truth. The last time you asked me that question, I didn't admit that I was a deceiver, that I was a liar, that I was a manipulator. The last time you asked me that question and what God was really saying was, are you still lacking character? Are you still plagued with that old nature that you have? Are you still struggling with Jacob? And he said, I'm Jacob. In other words, church, he could have lied. And he could have tried to say something else. But God was wanting to get him to the place that he came to the end and faced with who he really was. And he said, no longer will you be called Jacob, but from this night forward, there will be no more Jacob, but you shall be called Israel. You shall be a prince. You shall have power with God and you shall have favor with me. And that night, Jacob walked away, but he had a different name. He had a different nature. He had a different future. He didn't walk the same. He went in with a straight step. But when he, when he came out of that fight with the angel, he had a limp in his side. And let me tell you, there's no way that you can come in contact with Jesus and lead the same way you were before you met him. From that day forward, he had a reminder, I wrestled with God and I got my blessing. I got what it was that I was standing in the need of because I was not willing to give up, but I wrestled until I got what it was that I needed from God. But the truth of the matter is, the reason why none of us will never come to that place is that we don't want to admit we got some Jacob on the inside of us. We can never get the blessing that we want. We can never get to the place that we desire to be until you deal with the old nature that still lives on the inside of you, church. Ain't no use in you praying for God to give you a new environment, to take you to a new place. And all the while you're going to the new place, you're packing up all that old lies and all the old deceit and all the old misconception and trying to drag all that old stuff to the new place. You might as well stay where you're at. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And, and what you'll notice, church, is that he could not bless him until he got him by himself. He couldn't do it around everybody else. Because truth be told, if he would have got called out in front of his family, you know, pride might have would have wanted to come up and he might have wanted to lie and say, no, nah, I am who I said I was. I didn't do that to keep up appearances. But I pray to God that we as a people would get beyond trying to keep up appearances for people and trying to live our lives for people so that people will be pleased in what you do and like what you live. Because at the end of the day, they can't give you the blessings that you are standing in the need of. But God is the only one that that can bless you how you are standing in the need of being blessed. He could have lied. He could have did that, but he said, you know what? I'm Jacob. I'm Jacob. The one that lied. I'm Jacob. The one that deceived. I'm Jacob. The one that stole my brother's birthright and that's the reason that he out to kill me right now. I'm the one that did that and oh, if we would stop being like Jacob and trying to act like that everybody is just out to get us because they are out to get us. Maybe there's something that you did to Esau a long time ago. That's the reason that he's treating you like he is right now. That's the reason he's after you right now. Church, inside of every Jacob is in Israel, waiting to be changed. Inside of every soul of Tarsus is a Paul the apostle, waiting to be changed. 
inside of every drug addict or alcoholic or person that got issues going on, there's someone that is waiting to be renamed. And God says, I can change it if you really want to be changed. But God is not going to cause any of us to force us to do anything. You got to come to that place by yourself. Can, can you imagine a person coming to the realization, just like us, after he's done all the wrong that he could do? After he's ran away from it as long as he could run away from it. And can I tell y'all, just like Jacob, you can only run from your issues for so long. Just like Jacob, you can only run and try to hide and get away from that stuff from so long. But after a while, you got to face what it is that you got to face, church. You got to look that stuff in the eye. We got to get beyond, as I said a couple weeks ago, always brushing this stuff up under the rug and acting like it's nothing. Oh, it'll die. It'll disappear after a while. You got to deal with that stuff because when you don't, it just builds up and it builds up and it becomes bigger issues that you have to deal with later on. And all of these issues that Jacob was dealing with were nobody's fault but Jacob. Were nobody's fault but Jacob. Esau did not put Jacob in this position. Jacob put himself in this position. Jacob lied. Jacob deceived. Jacob was the one that did it. So he had nobody to blame but Jacob church. Nobody to blame. And he got so desperate. He said, you know what? I recognize that I've done wrong. I recognize that decisions that I made have not been good. I recognize that the choices that I made have not been right. So you know what, Lord? I want you to change me. I want you to do away with this old man that's in me. I want you to make something new in me. I believe he, he, he may have looked in the future and heard David say, Lord, I want you to create a new heart in me. I want to start this thing all over again. And if y'all be honest, each and every single one of us have had that reckoning moment in our life. Lord, I've gone as far as I can go. I've done as much as I can do. Lord, I need you to come and make a change in my life. Any of y'all ever had to wrestle with God? Oh, oh, uh, some of us say, preach, I'm resting right now. You, don't, you just don't know. You can't see it, but I got my arms up right now. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I'm in a fight right now because, preacher, even though I came to the house of God to get a word this morning, as soon as I leave here, I got battles. I got to fight on my job. I got battles that I got to fight in my home. I got battles that I got to fight. But, Lord, I came so that you can bless me with what I need so I'll be ready for the battle. He said, he said, you know what? The angel said, you let me go. The day is breaking. It's about to be daybreak. He said, he said, no, I will not let you go until you bless me. I want to ask you a question. Look at somebody and ask them, how bad do you want it? <laughs> how bad you want it will be shown in how hard you go after. How bad you want it, church, will be shown in the efforts that you put towards it to make it happen. How many of y'all really are desiring to have strong faith in God? It's going to be shown by the effort that you put towards it. How many of y'all really want to be blessed by God? It's going to be shown by how you conduct yourself, by how you're trying to live your life for him, by how you're trying to hold up and exhort his name above all things. Because he said, if I be lifted up above the earth, he said, I'll draw all oh, men unto me and if we'll do what it is that he's called us to do that is to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things he said they'll be added unto you it's a package deal church tell some tell them you got to hook up with Jesus you got to hook up you got to hook up to all spiritual blessings the Bible says they are found in Jesus Christ and I wonder when will we, as the people of God, get desperate enough to be like Jacob? To when we have things going on in our life, we don't just pray one time and leave them alone. That we don't just consider those issues for a moment 
and then forget about them, but we wrestle with God. Lord, I'm not going to stop calling. I'm not going to stop pleading. I'm not going to stop asking until you bless me. Lord, uh, Lord, I know my child may not want to hear what it is that I have to say, but Lord, I'm not going to stop until you intervene and until you cause a change to happen in their life. Lord, I know that I got different issues in my relationship, but Lord, I'm not going to stop calling. I'm not going to stop asking until you bless me. We too easy to give up. Some of us would have gave up once our hip got knocked out of socket. You know what I mean? Oh, Lord, help Jesus, somebody. He would have knocked my hip out of socket. But he had a reminder. Every day of his life from that moment forward, I wrestled with God. I walked with God. And he blessed me because I was willing to war with him. Yeah, I, I preached the same text my first time coming here. You remember Dickie Campbell? What was it? Let's get ready to rumble. And all of us need to be ready to rumble, church. Because can I tell you that you got an adversary that is already gone out as a roaring lion seeking those that he may devour and he is not taking it easy on you so you don't need to be taking it easy on him. You need to go to your house today pleading the blood over your house. You need to go into your house today. Get down with your wife and get down with your husband and y'all need to start praying and say we're going to work this thing out. We're going to get this thing together. You need to Go to your children and start praying for them and say, Death, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You are not going to have a way in their life. Lord, I'm going to wrestle. Lord, I'm going to continue to fight. I'm going to continue to put forth the effort until you bless me. Ask somebody, do you really want to be blessed? Lord, even though folk calling me crazy, you know what? I'm still going to service until you bless me. Yeah, Lord, I'm still going to put forth the effort until you bless me. Lord, I'm still going to give up my means, even if it ain't but two mites. Guess what, Lord? I'm going to give up my means until you bless me. Lord, I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm not just going to be partial in my serving, but I'm going to serve you with all of my heart, all of my mind and my body until you bless me. He says, I'm going to change the name of this place to Penny. Why am I going to change the name of it? Because I have seen God face to face. And my life has been preserved. Where did he see God? Who do you think the angel was? The angel was a theophanic representation of Jesus Christ. God just decided to show up himself. And let me tell you, church, there are some things that you go through in this life that you might be able to handle it by yourself. But I'm so glad that there are some things that we go through that God say, you know what? I got to show up for myself. I got to go down and help them with this situation because they just can't do it by themselves. I'm going to change the name of it because I didn't just fight. I didn't just wrestle, but I got my blessing. He preserved my life even though I had seen him, church. And can I tell you, anybody in here that's ever had to wrestle with God, you'll be honest and say, sometimes, preach, it ain't a one-round fight. Preacher, sometimes you go into overtime. Sometimes you got to, sometimes you know what, just like a game, after you get to the fourth quarter and there's somebody at the same school, you just got to continue to go into overtime. Sometimes you got to continue to fight, and that's our issue. We got enough strength for a two-minute fight, for a three-minute fight, for a four-minute fight. But how many of y'all can say, teacher, there's something, it's going to take weeks, it's going to take months, it's going to take some time for you to get through it, and you got to have strength to war and to wrestle until you get what it is that you stand in need of. Lord, I'm not going to stop. Tell somebody, don't stop. Get it, get it. 
Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. You got to persevere. You got to put forth effort, church. This stuff is not just going to happen by accident. The blessings of God are not just going to show up at your doorstep. Here I am. Pick me up. It's not going to happen like that. There are some things that you're going to have to fight for. The Bible says that the kingdom suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. There are some things that we're going to have to wrestle for, church. We're going to have to fight for. And I'm not talking about physical fights, so put your hands down. I know you was ready. I know you was ready. Put, put your weapons down because this fight that I'm talking about is going to be fought by prayer. This fight that I'm talking about is going to be fought by conversation with God. There are certain things, church, that your hands cannot fix. There are certain things, church, that these material things that we have cannot fix. There are certain things that go not out but by fasting and by prayer. And how many of us, how many of us, church, at this moment right now can say, you know what, Lord, I'm ready for the fight. I may have lost round one or round two, but guess what? I'm getting myself back together. I'm ready. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give up because I know that is the desire of Satan. Satan wants me to become discouraged. Satan wants my faith to be weakened. He wants my desire for the things of God to come to know. Satan wants my good show to come on on Sunday morning. So I sit there and watch the reruns and I won't come out and get the blessing that God has for me. Satan wants all of these various things to come up so that I lose my faith, so that I will not have a strong standing in God but I came to encourage somebody this morning that haven't done all to stand you got to keep on standing you got to stand on the word of God you got to be of good courage and he said in his word that he has strengthened your heart if you'll persevere if you're willing to put forth the energy church Satan is out to destroy He's out to kill and to steal everything that he can get his hands on. That's why you ought to be wrestling. You ought not wait till Sunday morning to put the dukes up. You ought to be putting them up every day of your life. When you wake up, what you at, devil? I'm ready for you. Come on. What, what? Bust a move. I'm ready for you. What, what's going on? You ought to be ready. You got to be alert. You got to be on guard. Because you do not know where the pitfalls and the snares of life lay. That's why you got to be watchful. And you got to pay attention, church. Because the devil don't fight fair. How many of y'all, the devil just send one little thing at your way at a time? Don't have them like that, do it. Here it is. Devil, devil sent three or four things at you at a time. And, 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 and your mind is so focused on one that you don't notice the other three. And, and by the time you get ready to address the other three and you thought that you had got rid of number one, here come number one getting bigger than what it was. And now these three over here, they've just been getting bigger and bigger and you haven't had time to address them. And you just want to get somewhere and say, Lord, what am I going to do? That's when you find yourself desperate. And I don't think many of us have ever reached the place of desperation. Because when you really get desperate for God, you'll shed some tears every now and then. When you really get desperate for God, you don't care what nobody say about you. You don't care how nobody looking. You'll open up your mouth and you'll bless the name of God. When you really get desperate for God, when you really know that you are a mark one, you have somebody that's after you. The devil has called off the little imps and he sent out the big dogs after you. And you recognize that the devil is after me. That's why I got to be watchful. I got to be alert so that I can stand in the day of testing you got to fight church you got to put forth the effort you got to be willing to go to war you got to be willing to endure some things and as I say often David messed us up 
because we got through reading what David was saying, and now we're walking around here thinking, oh, we've been made into for a night. Joy's going to come in the morning. That's our favorite line. Somebody lose a loved one or something like that. Oh, we've been made into for a night. Joy coming in the morning. The morrow will come and the thing is worse than it was on day one. Day three, the thing hasn't went anywhere. Here you go three months into a situation. It has not changed and it has not gotten any better. What am I supposed to do in that stand? Am I supposed to give up? Am I supposed to just lay there and let what happened happen? No, my job is to wrestle with God. Now, understand me, I ain't telling none of y'all to get violent with the Lord. Don't, 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 don't take that. Don't, they ain't going to turn out good. The, our arms are too short to box with God. Let me tell you, it ain't going to work. You're going to be sitting there looking crazy, swinging by yourself. You, but you got to fight on this spiritual playing field that I'm talking about, church. For the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and rulers and spiritual wickedness that is set up in high places. That's what we're fighting against. So can we stop fighting against each other and start fighting our real enemy? Start fighting the one that's really after us, that's really trying to destroy us, that's really trying to make sure that we miss heaven? That's his desire, church. That's his desire, church. So whatever it is that you are standing in the need of today, you can't look at me and say, preach, I ain't standing in the need of nothing because we are all standing in the need of something. Amen. And if all of us can be honest, you can say, preacher, there have been some things that I've been praying to God and I've been asking God to do for a long time right now. And, and it may not have gotten done just yet, but I came to encourage somebody this morning. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you give up. He said, be not weary in your well-doing for in due season you're going to reap if you do not grow weary. You got to be strengthened. But here's your, here's your problem. Stop looking around to other folk to give you strength. You remember when David came back after war and David found in Ziglag that his wife and his children, everything had been stolen from them. And now the men that were with David and fighting with David and fighting for David are trying to kill David because they've lost everything that they had. And the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Dickie, can I tell you, you ain't going to always have nobody there to encourage you. You're not going to always have nobody in there to tell you, hold on just a little while longer. Everything is going to be all right. There are going to come those moments, you can say, preacher, sometimes in the wee middle nights of the hour, where you just become so overwhelmed by different feelings that you are feeling, church. That's why you got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. You cannot be a person that waits until Sunday morning to have faith that can move mountains. But on Monday night, when you are facing adversities in your own home, you got to have faith that can say the Lord is my help the Lord is my strength the Lord is the one that I'm going to look to my foot shall not be moved but I shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of the waters I shall not be moved I shall not be moved because I'm with Jesus I'm going to fight and I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to wrestle and I will not waver. Because on the other side of this, there's a blessing. Not with your name on it, but it got my name on it. Thank you, Jesus. Not yours, but it's mine. And can I tell you what God got for you? I can't stop it. I can't block it. The only one that can stop that is you. seen God face to face and my life has been preserved. How many of y'all can honestly say, preacher, I've been changed. Come on now. 
Preacher, I've been changed. Preacher, there's something on the inside of me now. Preacher, I didn't used to have this thing, but now it seems like when I find myself getting out track, I got this little something on the inside of me trying to, trying to pull me back to where I need to be. Preacher, I didn't always have this feeling. Preacher, I used to, I used to juke and jive all night long, but preacher, now all I want to do is just have a moment to offer the Lord a pray. Preacher, I used to drink everything that I could get my hands on. Now I'm sipping on the blood of Jesus. Now that has been a change in my life. Because I wrestle with God. And church, you becoming that type of person doesn't just happen overnight. It comes after you have wrestled with God. It comes after you have persevered. And not just wrestled. But when you won, yes. when you have gotten the victory, and can y'all say, preacher, there have been some things I didn't understand why I had to go through it when I went through it. I didn't really understand why I had to endure it when I had to endure it. But now I look back on it and say, Lord, I give you glory and Lord, I give you praise because if it had not been for me enduring that light affliction, I would not know you the way that I know you right now. Lord, had it not been for me being ran through the ring and flipped upside down and thrown left and right, I would not know you the way that I know you right now. And that would have never been a change uh -huh. in the life of Jacob uh -huh. had he not met with God. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, ain't no change going to come in your life until you meet with God. Until you have that encounter with God. I'm not talking about what somebody told you, somebody else's experience, but I'm talking about the experience that you have had with God. All of us in here right now can think back to a moment well, we can just know for sure, you know what? God met me where I was. It wasn't nobody but God that changed me. I tried to change myself and I couldn't do it. But when God got his hands on it, he made a difference in my life, church. Be willing to persevere. Be willing to fight more than one round. Be willing to pray more than one prayer. Be willing to endure. Be willing. You ought, you ought to be like a telemarketer with God. Y'all know what to tell you. They calling you all time of the day, all day long. I'm talking about 8, 9 o'clock at night now. They calling. First thing in the morning, they, you think something wrong. It's a telemarketer call. We've been trying to catch up with you about your warranty. It's about to be overdue. We're trying to reach you about your insurance policy. It's about to cancel. Getting on your nerves. Making you want to say things to them that you shouldn't say. But just like they get on your nerves, you need to start getting on God's nerves. You, you need to start taking your prayers. You need to start taking your concerns, your worries, and your thoughts before God. And God, I'm going to keep sending it to you. Lord, I'm going to keep calling you about your extended warranty until you bless me. <laughs> Have you heard about your vehicles? <laughs> I'm going to continue to call, Lord, until you bless me. I asked again, how bad do you want it? How bad do you desire that relationship with God? How bad do you desire strong relationships in your house between the husband and the spouse, between the children? How bad do you desire to have a good work environment? How bad do you want that stuff? It's going to show by the effort that you put towards it to make it happen. It's going to show by how much you find yourself in private time on your knees. And sometimes, church, I find myself not on my knees, but just flat out on my face. Sometimes you just got to lay it all out, church. 
Lord, you know me as I came into this world, and you know me as I am right now. Lord, you know where I'm going, and you know how I'm going to get there. So, Lord, I need you to show up and to help me right now. Yes, I'm on your way, church. You're going to be able to thrive and to make it in this life. Because once you've had that encounter with God, because once you have that encounter with God, you will never be the same again. You may go back and do some of the same stuff, but you will never be the same individual again once you have met God and once he has made a real change in your life. Somebody this morning has not yet even experienced that miracle working power of God. But as the song says, can I tell you, God is the only one that can take a black soul, dip it in red blood, and it come out white as night. God is the only one, church, that can take that black soul of yours and convert it and transform it to be what he, for what he desires for it to be, church. God desires to make a change in your life on this morning. And can I tell you, just like he changed Jacob, he can change. If he could change the liar, the deceiver, the thief, he can change you as well. He can make a difference in your life. Don't let nobody tell you that you're so far off that God can't do nothing for you. That's a lie and the truth ain't in it. God does his best work with the folk that we think God can't do nothing with. He does some of his best work with those that we think are unqualified. Yeah. With those that we think are unworthy. But the Bible lets us know, God said, I ain't come for the healthy. God said, I didn't come for them that are well because the well don't even need a physician. But I came for those that are sick. All of us got some sin sickness that we're dealing with. And if you say, no, nah, I know what it is. L-I-E-S. All of us have those struggles. And some struggles and things that we deal with you don't even feel comfortable sharing with those that are in your close circle. There are certain things that you deal with by yourself because they weigh on you so heavy and they gnaw at you so heavy that there are certain things that the only person you can share with it is God. But let me tell you, church, that's the best place to take it is God. Because when you take it to God, you ain't got to worry about Jane talking about it, Janice talking about it, Sue talking about it, Bill talking about it, Bob talking about it, Tyrone talking about it. You ain't got to worry about all of that when you take it to God. And you let him handle your situations, your worries, your anxieties, whatever you're dealing with. God is able, church. But are you willing to put forth the effort to get what it is that you need from God? Are you willing to wrestle? Are you willing to fight? Are you willing to pray until you get tired of praying and then keep on praying? Mm -hmm. Are you willing to ask of God and don't get an answer and just continue to ask until he gives you the answer that you're looking for? My brother and my sister, he can make a change in your life if you would but give him an opportunity to do that. As I mentioned earlier, with, in every Saul of Tarsus, there's a Paul the Apostle. Mm -hmm. There is potential in every individual that finds themselves in opposition of God to become a child of God. Can I tell you that God can take somebody off the street that don't know nothing about him, don't know nothing but about a bottle? And God can take that person and make them the best preacher that had ever walked across this earth. That God can take somebody off the road that's been struggling with addiction. And God can make that person be the best deacon that you've ever seen in your life. God can take somebody that's been struggling with different things in their life. And God can clean them up. How do I know that? Because he did the same thing with us. Yeah. 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 Cleaned us up. Made us new. They said they ain't them digging Campbell and such was some of you. He changed us. Made a difference in our lives. 
And my brother and my sister, if you have not yet experienced that miracle work and power of God, can I tell you, the same power that changed each and every single individual in here is able to change you as well. You are not too messed up that God is not able to clean you up. You're not too far out that God can't reach you. God is willing, he's ready, and he's able to make a difference in your life. The question is, are you ready today? Are you ready and willing to denounce your ways, your thoughts, your intentions, to obey what it is that God has for your life? Are you here this morning, and maybe there's somebody here at this time, you have not even yet begun to experience that power? I invite you to experience that power. Can I tell you, the greatest invitation that I'm going to give you is to Jesus. You know, you can receive an invitation today from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and they say, we want you to come to the White House, have dinner with us. That would be a good invitation, but that would not be the best invitation that you could receive in your life. The greatest invitation that you could ever receive in your life is come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He says, come all ye that are weary and heavy laden. And guess what? I'll give you. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. He's that same God, church. God ain't changed. That's what I love about him. He's not like us. He don't change with the seasons. He ch- God is the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same even forevermore. He said heaven and earth are going to pass away. But my word, guess what? is still going to be standing. And that word, church, is the same word that's going to judge us in the last day. He says in that day, a book and another book, they're going to be open. And we're going to be judged by those things that are written down in the book. Things that we might not have seen. Guess what? God seen them. He not only seen them, but he was writing them down. He was taking note of them. That's why we ought to be repentant Christians every day of our life. Before you go to bed at night, Lord, I don't know if I did sin, but if I did sin, Lord, whether it be my own mission or your mission, Lord, I want you to forgive me. Because if I die in my sins, where you are, I cannot come. So, Lord, I want you to forgive me. And not only do I want you to forgive me, but when you forgive me, I want you to then create in me clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. My brother, my sister, God is able to change you today. He's able to make a difference in your life if you'll give him that opportunity. He loved us enough not to just come and give us all of these things, but he loved us enough to set forth a pattern for us that we are to follow after. I'm so glad that he loved us enough that he gave us the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth. I'm glad that he gave us what we need so that we can find direction in this life, so that we can have guidance in this life to face what we have to face and to deal with what we have to deal with. And I'm so glad that he did not say, you know what, I give you salvation, but it's going to cost you 10000 I, I, I give you salvation, but it's going to cost you 25. Lord, we'd be pitiful. Walk around here looking. I know I'd be looking crazy. We walk around here looking crazy. But I'm so glad that God has given us a free gift. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. But it came at a mighty high price. Because it cost our Savior his life. It cost him the shedding of his innocent blood. In order for us to have that opportunity. And I was so glad that somebody thought enough of me. That before he could even meet me. Guess what? He was thinking about me. He had me on his mind. He had considered me. The Bible said that before the foundation of the world. God already had a plan. And I'm thankful for it. So my brother and my sister. If you are here today. And you have not yet began to experience. The power of God in your life. Because can I tell you, you ain't getting no blessing outside of Jesus Christ. For all spiritual blessings. I sum up all spiritual blessings are in Jesus Christ. So if you're a kid today and you want to live that life, you want to be one of those in the book of Acts that they call Christians. You want to be one of those people, I give you the Savior's invitation. Come by hearing the word of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. So then 
Faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yes. After you have heard the word of God, you must believe what it is that you've heard. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall all likewise perish. After one has believed the word of God, it is imperative that that person repent of your sins. What is repentance? Repentance is a change that takes place in my mind that's going to show up in my actions and by my deeds and the things that I do in this life. And after repentance, with my mouth, the Bible says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You make confession with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and be willing to join him in the watery grave of baptism, have your sins washed away, done away with, never to come before you in this life and neither the life that is to come, and the Lord himself will add you to his body. Maybe you're here today, you're already a Christian, but you say, Preacher, I've been fighting, but I'm just tired. Preacher, I got things that I'm wrestling with every day, and like you said, Deacon, the reason I ain't cocoa puff crazy right now is because of the grace of God. Let us pray for you today. Don't let me, we got to get out of this business of, of worrying about who's going to be wondering about this or wondering about that because if we all be honest, everybody will be coming down here asking for prayer because we all stand in the need of something for God. So if you're here today and you stand in the need of prayer or you desire to become a child of God, this is your opportunity. This is that moment that you say, today that you hear my voice and say, He's knocking at somebody's door on this morning. The question is, are you going to let him come in? You have that opportunity now to make that decision as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Show, show me, show me the way. Lord, show, show me, show I'm down here, Lord, and I need your power. Show, show me, show me the way. Oh, Lord, show. Need your, need your 
talking to him about the seven churches of Asia Manor. And the spirit told him, said, tell them to correct those golden candlesticks or I shall come quickly. I want to say, Lord, come quickly. Come quickly, Lord, we need you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What an awesome time we've had Praising God. Thank Brother Peterson for, for the power. Thank him for allowing God to use him in the Holy Spirit in a special way to deliver his word this morning. And always, always, I think sometimes we probably forget, but I'm grateful to my son for letting God use him. And preach and singing because the Bible tells us sing with the spirit sing with the understanding this is a lively organization or a live organism not it's life it's not a dead church God expects us to do our best when we come are there any that have any uh, prayer requests that we could take advantage of at this time we, 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 we want to pray for those who need. It, listen, we thank you so much. Uh, we're, I'm going to take my seat. I think uh, this is probably the first time you've seen me, but I've got a little emotional charge going on here, and I almost had to, like Brother Cross, but tell him, hold my mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want him to get out the barn, so God bless you. Look for Jack Evans. 
Uh, Brother Jack Evans Jr. started today. Uh, they're going to be going through, I think, through the week uh, with the preaching. Brother Evans will go from Sunday to Wednesday. Then they have other preachers, uh, Marcus Watkins and Brother Xerxes Snail will be uh, preaching as well this week. But this is the Northside Church of Christ. If you have an opportunity, I'd like to go and uh, support what we asked you to do so. Uh, thank you again. God bless you. Pray for the church and, and be careful going to eat your lunch. Come back and meet us this evening at 6 o'clock. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. What a wonderful time we had on this morning. God was truly in this place. And we pray that everything that we have done, said, and sang have been done decently in order uh, according to God's word. Uh, any visitors on this morning? I didn't need any cards. Any visitors on this morning? I don't think we have any. We're all family. Amen. It's good to see all of our members. Uh, we want to remind you. Uh, to 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 just think on, on on the message on this morning. What a word from God on this morning. Think on the service. Think on the things that we've we prayed about, prayed for the people we prayed for, the sick and the shut in, uh, those who are going uh, through uh, bereavement at this time as well. Uh, I think that's all we have this morning. Any other announcements? Good from the education. Yes, sir. Financial. Okay. Saturday, 8 o'clock. All brothers, Saturday, 8 o'clock. Here at the building? Yes, sir. Okay, not, not at three, three Forks? No, <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. Any other announcements? Listen, it's good to see all of you. Uh, be careful. Oh, I'm sorry. One more. Ladies class, 430 next Sunday in the fellowship hall. Amen. Well, let us all stand to be dismissed. Uh, I'm going to ask my brother to come and give us a dismissal prayer as we stand. What a wonderful time we had on today. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you. Thank you for tuning in today and being a part of our worship services. We pray that those things that were said and done on today will benefit and bless into your life that it will help you to grow as a